hey fellow tennis nerds i hope all is well did you enjoy the weekend roger's farewell quite emotional he kind of got me back into tennis after starting watching him when he was at his prime what an ambassador for the sport and it was quite emotional to see him and rafa uh, together crying on the bench there at the Labour Cup. Uh, it was a tough watch for many, but it's also kind of a glorious tribute to the career and the moments they shared together as this uh, Fedal rivalry. And uh, I really enjoyed watching it, and I really hope that Roger stays with the sport. I think he will, and he will continue to be an excellent ambassador for tennis. Uh, so uh, thanks, Roger, for everything you did to inspire me and my game, but also millions and millions of people and players all over the world. That out of the way, uh, there were two rackets at the Labour Cup. They both had Oxetic Tech. It was the Radical MP and the Gravity MP from Head. It's rare that they do these cosmetics, uh, kind of limited edition, where it's a new technology included. I think that was a gutsy move. I have not tried these frames. Oxetic Tech makes a slight difference in how the racket feels. I uh, also feel like the stability gets somewhat improved in the different generations of Oxetic. I've tried Speed, Prestige and also Extreme now. You can see my reviews on YouTube and TennisNerd.net. But I did enjoy the Oxetic Tech. It's a minor upgrade. It's not something you have to rush to the store to get. But I'm curious if you have played any of these frames. How do they play compared to the previous generation? Are they very similar or are there distinct differences. I hope to review the new Gravity and Radical lines when they arrive, but that will take a few months before we get going with the new updates to the Radical and Gravity line. Uh, I also have received many, many questions. As always, every week I get like hundreds of questions on my various social media, Instagram, Tennis Nerd Insta, Tennis Nerd .net, via the Contact Us form or in the comments or this YouTube channel, the comments field. So if you have questions, put the hashtag AskTennisNerd. So I will pick questions that I feel have some value also for other people. One of the questions was about Sebastian Corda's racket. He is using a blacked out frame in Mets and he has an 18-19 string pattern now. He used to play 18-20. Some months back he changed to 18-19. Same string pattern as Novak and Medvedev, but they both use 95 square inch rackets. But when you work with Andre Agassi, he seems to like to tweak your rackets. It happened with Novak. I think we see it happening again here. I think he did work with Dimitro in the past, and he also tweaked the rackets. And I find that to be an interesting concept. He works closely, as he did during his career with Roman Prokes in New York, the racket guy there, and uh, they like to do some tweaks. I don't know what's underneath the black paint here. New mold, it does look a little bit different than a blade, but it could still be a blade 98, perhaps slightly longer. 1819 pattern. We will hopefully get to know that in the future. If you have any information about Seb's Corda's racket, let me know. But I don't have more than the string pattern change at the moment. It's quite hard to tell from the pictures here what has been changed. But it does look like there's some, some differences from his previous frame besides the string pattern. From Ginger the Golden Doodle, can you please demo the ESO 98 tour and give us your assessment? Yes, I will order the ESO 98 tour. I can't get a demo from Tennis Warehouse Europe because they don't stock that model. I don't know why really, but it's a shame because I think that one was very good, the previous generation. I uh, really liked that one. In the end, got some arm pain from it. And also Carousel from My Tennis HQ, which is a great YouTube channel. Uh, he also got arm issues. So uh, there's something with that racket. Maybe there's a lot of weight in the throat, which affects your swing a bit or something else. Sometimes the stiffness rating don't tell the whole story because the stiffness is measured in like seven different locations and that's kind of an average. So you can't read too much into the RA rating when you look at rackets. Gives you some indication, but not more than that. So I, well, that was definitely a stiff racket that uh, was I was sad to actually put that away because I really enjoyed it. Maybe this one is softer on the arm and it still retains the good qualities of the previous generation, so I'm keen to test it. So I'll purchase a, a copy and, and give it a try. Uh, what are your thoughts on a dedicated beginner purchasing and using an older, well-known and liked model? For instance, an E-Zone DR, Pure Drive GT, Wilson Steam, new or slightly used? Or should you go for the latest technology? That question from Adam Cote. Uh, I definitely think you can buy an older version, older model, uh, of a well-known brand, well-known model that is favorably, favorably reviewed. You will be happy with that. Uh, there's not that much of an upgrade in recent tech. Sometimes there are improvements uh, over generations, of course. Uh, the latest models of the Aero and the Extreme that I reviewed recently and the Ultra, 
Uh, they were all improvements, in my opinion. I think generally 2022 has been a great year for rackets. The models that have been released around this year has been very, very good. As definitely upgrades to the previous generation. Not huge, but uh, definite upgrades. So if you're super picky about rackets, go for the latest one if it has received favorable reviews. But otherwise, you can definitely play with a 10-year-old model, 15-year-old model, and you'll be fine. You don't need to go for the latest and greatest. There are uh, models that are excellent out there. Like there are many fans of the Yonix DR or older pure drives over the newer generations. So uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, and buy an older model. But it's good to know if it's a trusted and, and respected model uh, in reviews and so on before you go for it, perhaps. Adrian Clinton. Hey, Jonas, did you did you notice curious US Open racket smash episode that he had lead tape at 12 o'clock? Please confirm that outstanding job on all your racket and string reviews. Thanks. That really warms my heart. Yes, I did zoom in and check and I've held a curious personal racket up close before. He has some lead tape, uh, only a few grams, it seems like, at 12 o'clock. You can see that the bumper is smashed here, so it really reveals that there's some lead tape underneath. Most pros have lead tape underneath, unless they want the lead on 3 and 9, where you usually have it visible on the frame. You can see that with players, for example, like Novak or uh, Bautista Agut, for example. Hey, Jonas, from Nick Boy. How does the new Ultra version 4 compare to the E100 and the Speed MP? Thanks a lot. And there's also... Uh, Chagri Attic, bad pronunciation by me, who also wonders about this response. So the new Ultra is a bit more powerful than the Eason, I feel like. Easier to swing, lower swing weight overall, it seems like on the average. It's um, a nice frame, a uh, little bit less muted than the, the Eason. I feel like the sweet spot is a bit more forgiving on the Eason 100. And still the control is a tiny bit better. I just prefer the Eason a bit. But the Ultra is a very good racket. If you like power, fast swing... Perhaps you prefer the Wilson grip shape or the way Wilson rackets feel. Go for the Ultra 100, great frame. They're both very, very close in how they play, and I both like them both. The Speed is a different racket altogether. That's kind of a somewhere in between a control racket like a Blade and a more powerful racket like a Pure Drive. That's where you get the Speed. The Speed is still a 100 square inch racket, but the beam is much thinner, it has more flex. Uh, less power, higher swing weight to compensate, so you get some more power through the swing weight. But the swing weight also makes players need to work harder to swing the frame. So it's not for everyone. Definitely a more demanding frame, the speed, than the ultra and the e zone. Uh, so more control, higher swing weight, more demanding the speed. Kind of in between a control racket and a power racket. And then men rep 24 asks me about my customization of the E-Zone. Can you tell us please why and how uh, you customized it? And sure, I can. Uh, I have the E-Zone 100 here. Uh, I did only small adjustments to this. I like it in stock form, no need to add anything. But I just wanted a bit more plow through, a bit more stability through contact point with this racket. Added 2 grams at the 12 o'clock, maybe 2.5 and six grams on the handle because I want a more headlight feel. I don't want all the weight to be in the head. And then it's just base grip standard and overgrip standard. Yonex Super Grip is what I like usually. Or the Head Prime Pro, I think they're called. Those grips are my favorites, but there are many good overgrips. So uh, nothing, nothing special there. And I use RPM Blast Orange as a test. I generally prefer Polytor Pro as it's a bit of a softer string. Yellow Polytor Pro, I think, is a great choice for this one. 1.25 or 1.30H, maybe around 52 pounds, I would string it. But yeah, Eason 100, my favorite power racket, because that was one or more. One other question, which power racket is your favorite? Eason 100 currently uh, on top. I feel like I get good control despite all the power, and I, I like the sensation when I hit drop shots, and I feel very connected to this frame. And I did give it a, a glowing review when I reviewed it. So the new Eason's are all good. And that's why I'm curious about the East Zone 98 Tour as well. All right, I think that's it for the questions this week. I hope you enjoy this format. Please put hashtag AskTennisNerd for future editions of this uh, segment. And uh, I will try to answer as many questions as I can, but I try to pick the ones that have the most general appeal or the ones that kind of keep repeating over and over again. I want to thank Fuzzy Yellow Bolts for sponsoring the video. They have this great product called the Singles Playbook. I actually bought this book which also includes videos over a year ago and uh, before any kind of sponsorship or anything. And I really like it. I learned a lot from pattern play, creating different strategies in your game that you can kind of integrate and you have it more on automatic. So you don't always have to think how to beat pushers, how to attack a proper way, certain combinations, one, two combinations. 
that if you integrate them into your game, you can, you know, win points more easily. I would say that's that's the way it works. And uh, it really helped me. I think it can help you. And that's why I have them as a sponsor. Check out the link in the description. You get an idea of, of how this book and its videos are constructed. And I find it to be a great tool to get more out of your tennis. That is all for now. Please support the, the channel by subscribing, maybe purchasing something through the links in the description or joining Patreon. Big thanks to all of you. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.